pledge our allegiance to our beloved Imam Hussain here in the holy city of Karbala where the processions are becoming stronger and stronger more and more people are filling the city to participate in the morning sessions and lamentations of Imam Hussain Islam. and it's something really beautiful to see when people are inside the actual courtyard of his shrine beating their chest and reciting beautiful poetry in honor of the Imam whenever the Imam's name is mentioned whenever they have a dua instead of like we do in our areas all over the world um, turning towards wherever we need to turn to these people turn directly to the grave of Imam Hussain A.S. They finish their mourning and they walk into the shrine of Imam Hussain A.S. and ask him to help him with their wishes and ask him to help him with their desires and as you can hear behind me there is a beautiful Turkish procession walking past where they hold sticks reminiscing swords as if they are going to war pledging their allegiance to Imam Hussain A.S. and these people are walking all over Karbala, all over the locality of the shrines back and forth just reciting beautiful, beautiful tunes of poetry, truly bringing tears to our eyes. Uh, and if you can hear it in the mics, and apologies if we have to speak quite loudly, um, but they are walking right behind our studio now, of course. Today, while our hearts are in Karbala, our souls are also partly in Kufa. As we know, for many today is a day where Muslim Ibn Aqil, the messenger of Imam Hussain Islam, was mourned. As we know well the story, the people of Kufa wrote to Imam Hussain, pledging allegiance to him, saying that they would rise up against the tyrant Yazid. Imam Hussain simultaneously sent Musa bin Aqil to Kufa to collect uh, pledges of allegiance and to gather an army to support Imam Hussain But once he reached Kufa, he found out that these people that were pledging their allegiance, were, their, their pledges were nothing more than, than mere words. They were nothing more, they didn't extend to their actions, which is something that we have to ask ourselves today. When we stand up and we cry, Ya Hussein, are we saying it in the same manner that his companions did there in Karbala, knowing that they would die tomorrow? Or are we saying it in the manner that the people of Kufa did, knowing that as soon as times get a little bit tough, as soon as there's a little bit of fear in them, they left Imam Hussein and Muslim bin Aqil himself to die. As we know, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were all treated horribly by the people, and there is a beautiful but sad metaphor in that, seeing Muslim bin Aqil, the messenger of Imam Hussein, also taken by these people. And it's there, after Muslim bin Aqil is meeting his, is being sentenced to his death, it's like Imam Hussein himself hears. And inshallah, I'm going to read a very short poem before we move on with our segment. And I hope that the professors behind me can really accent this poem because it brings out a lot of the emotion that's in this poem and general poetry towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam. In Hussein's eye a tear, as he says, farewell, my messenger. From Mecca to Kufa, it ends in Karbala. Hussein cries out, oh my cousin, what game has Kufa played? Oh writers of Kufa, upon my household's blood you weighed. In my eyes, if he is preyed upon, then upon me you have preyed. And if he sways from his horse, it's as if the whole world has swayed. His Lord, his only companion. And after he had prayed, he turns his head and sees behind him no helper and no aid. He calls out for Hussein. Hussein's tears of blood rain. Written is the future where it ends in Karbala, alone in the city. If he, and if he finishes his prayer, the only support left for him sleeps in his eye, his tears. Even if he turns his head, and all the helpers disappear. Kufa's mosque and sky and desert cry out, O Muslim, we are here. Yet his hope flickers when only silence reaches his ear. No friends and no family, only enemies appear. He reads Falak and he reads Nas. His sword cries out, O Abbas, and he begins the war. He rises, refusing to be a part of his own tragedy. And within him ignites the blood of Khaybar's family, his allegiance and his zeal. It's a thing of beauty. He draws his sword and he begins the battle with Ya Ali, an army of angels behind him. Tell me who is lonely? One man fed better from his cradle against an army written upon his palm. Ali is my first Imam and I am his defender. Muslim battles alone, yet the hundreds he endangers. If ever he tires, then Hussein standing alone he pictures. O oh, Beni Omeya, he says, I'm of Beni Hashim's soldiers, the son of Abu Talib, to no tyrant surrenders. Is this all you have brought me? Bring me greater numbers and the heads of disbelief 
the sword of belief dismembers. Muslim written upon his sword, Shia written upon the blood poured. In Kufa lives Badr, it ends in Karbala. They take Muslim to Ibn Ziyad and he's wrapped up in chains. Oh Muslim, where are your supporters? They say, not a soul remains. Know that our tyranny, it shall hold Iraq's neck by its reins. And once we have taken your life, we will come back for Hussein's. If from giving allegiance to us, your cousin refrains, will add his children's lives, his women captive to his plains. To Hussein, say goodbye. In the tears of blood you cry. His cries the skies will hear. It ends in Karbala. His cries the skies will hear. It ends in Karbala. As we know, Muslim, the story of Muslim bin Aqil was the beginning of the story of Karbala. It's almost as if Muslim is the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the surah that is the story of Imam Hussain And as we know from the story of Imam Hussain death almost does not act in a normal way. Usually when people die, they are long forgotten, they are buried and they are gone. But in the case of people like Imam Hussain and his companions, though they have died, it's as if we can feel him alive with us. You can hear the processions behind me. You can see these glorious domes, the millions, the millions coming to visit Imam Hussain almost as if he is still alive and he is not buried in that shrine. Rather, he is sitting there awaiting his visitors. So therefore, we ask ourselves, is death the beginning or is it the end? And how can we look at this in the context of the story of Imam Hussain's journey from Medina to Karbala? I am honored to be joined once again by Sayyid Ali and Nawab. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Um, so if you can tell us, when it comes to the lovers of Imam Hussain, the people that we see here, the millions that we see here in Karbala that we've been seeing every day, how do they see death in the context of Imam Hussain and the love for Imam Hussain? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to first of all welcome our dear guests and viewers to Karbala and inshallah during these nights we will be able to take a glimpse of the the blessings of Abi Abdullah al Hussein Salamullah alayhi which is very apparent in the city of Karbala. I would like to take one phrase from the speech of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, when he was in the city of Mecca uh, soon to leave towards Karbala the Imam spoke advising and admonishing people then one of the phrases in that speech in that sermon was that the Imam says and that means that the Imam is saying that death has been destined on the de descendants of the of adam alayhi salam like the necklace on uh, a female's neck and that has many meanings but the fact that imam alayhi salam has drawn a comparison between death and the necklace on a a female's neck means that Imam is saying that death to me is as a female enjoys or is happy to have a necklace on her neck. Khut al maut, as we said, death has been destined upon the descendants of Adam. And another saying is that death has been written upon the children of Adam. Fil mahfud, the board that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes the life of human beings on this earth. Jidul Fatat, if we go back to Surah Al-Masad, ayah number five, the word Jid has been used in this surah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he describes uh, Abu Lahab and his wife, when they came and they shown, uh, showed this uh, animosity and hatred against the Holy Prophet and the Muslims, the outnumbered Muslims at that time. Allah says at the end of this surah, Fi jidiha hablun min masad, that the wife of Abu Lahab, she had worn or she had around her neck jiduha hablun min masad. Now, jid, as we said, 
is the neck and necklace goes around the neck leaving a mark at times if a female or a lady or a little child wears a necklace for a couple of hours when she takes it off you will see there is a, a line across the neck now that comparison that the Imam makes Imam is saying the same way that the female wears a necklace on the neck and the neck is skin stuck to the neck to the bone the same way death is stuck with the human beings in a narration is that uh, Bani Adam the descendants of Adam the children of Adam when they are born the day they are born or maybe even before they are born Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for them what day what time and at what location they are going to pass away now every single one coming to this world has or they will be given a birth certificate on that birth certificate is written that so and so was born on this day on this time at this year in this location and they will use that birth certificate in their daily lives the same way they are born they will depart this world and the authorities or the hospital will issue a death certificate now here between two brackets I would like to mention one of the closest of servants to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. As our dear viewers noticed and heard and saw and watched Imam Hussein TV these days, these days marks the passing away of one of the servants of Abi Abdullah al Hussein by the name of Muhsin Jabbar Zara. This individual was a, a presenter since day one when Imam Hussein TV started. If I'm not mistaken, the age of Imam Hussein TV is more than 10 years. Brother Muhsin, I accompanied him from close proximity. I lived with him for a small period of time. The brothers here in the channel they lived with him for many years, for 10 years, and they know his character. He was truly a, a sincere servant of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, who dedicated, and when I say dedicated, I mean that his background, his family, he comes from a, a very well off family back in Iran, in Isfahan. And he was a young man, not in need of anything. But he decided to leave his home, to leave his mother and his brothers and his family and his livelihood and come all the way to Karbala. When he came to Karbala, he dedicated his time fully to propagating the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein through Imam Hussein TV. This brother Muhsin was not married. And when he was asked, couple of days ago or a week ago one of the elders here in Karbala asked him when shall we go to ask for your wife we want to get you married and this is his statement look and just ponder I want our brothers and sisters to ponder that brother Muhsin Jabbar Zara how far he looked some of us we look at our lives for the next couple of days, the next week, the next month. But the way he looked was he looked for the next 10, 20 years, 30 years. He, this is what he said to them. He said, if I go and get married, my wife, my family, my later on children, they will occupy the majority of my time. And that time I will lose from using to propagate the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. So I will stay as I am because I have a path that I have chosen for myself and he passed away tragically and unfortunately his passing away was since truly a loss not only to the brothers in Imam Hussein TV but it was a loss for 
all the mu'mineen and mu'minat. Because these days when people all over the world, the viewers of Imam Hussein TV 3, 1, 2 and 3, when they heard about the passing away of brother Muhsin Jabbar Zara, they continued in ringing from day one, from the morning until the night, calls kept coming in, people crying and being shocked to hear the news of his passing away. And recently, he said that these billions of people who are coming to Karbala in the name of Imam Hussein on the day of Arba'een, are they not worthy for us to open a satellite channel in the name of Arba'een for the Zawar of Abi Abdullah Hussein? He went that far to open a satellite channel in the name of Arba'een for the Zawar of Abi Abdullah Hussein. And he had been working, he had live shows, recording programs for Arba'een, and he had plans. He has spoken to the management of Imam Hussein TV to help him and guide him to how to open the Arabic version of the Arba'in channel. But unfortunately, when death comes, it comes. He didn't have the chance to continue his dream. And Brother Muhsin Jabbar Zara is a very beautiful example that no matter what you plan for yourself, when death comes, it comes. Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, ala wuldi Adam. Death has been destined, whatever you do. Ala fatat. Imam Hussein has another beautiful statement. He says, La mahis an yawmin bil qalam. There is no way you will be able to run away from death. Because that day has been destined for you, for mankind. And tonight, we are going to remember and we will speak about a very noble character, a very noble person, who also, from day one, dedicated his existence to propagate the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was from Bani Hashim. He was from the family of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He was the cousin of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Muslim, son of Aqil ibn Abi Talib. Muslim ibn Aqil. He was very close to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And he used to highly respect his master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. But the way that these noble individuals, they dedicate their dedication for Islam and their dedication for the message of Rasulullah, the message of Islam is amazing. We should take these individuals as our role models. We should take individuals like Muslim Ibn Aqil, who was a messenger sent from Medina by Abi Abdullah al Hussein towards Kufa to inform the people of Kufa that Abi Abdullah al Hussein has sent me to give you his answer. You asked Abi Abdullah if he can join you and come to Kufa. Because you are ready, you will support him, you will stand by him in this noble cause. And now Imam wants to know if you are serious. Because the end conclusion is going to be serious. Aina ma takunu. In Surah An Nisa, verse 78, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aina ma takunu. Yudurikkumul maut. Walau kuntum fi burujin mushayyadah. The death that you are trying to run away, oh mankind. This moat, this death which once you just bring the name of death, once you mention death, you see most people, they want to change the subject. They don't want to hear about it. Because it scares them. It terrifies them. Because they, why does one become terrified of something because they don't know much about it. They are ignorant about that subject. And one of the subjects is death. And what is the reality of death? What is death? Death is just the, it's like a, a transit. We are here in this life, we are in transit. Death is moving from one location to another. The reality of this life is that we are like 
passes by. We're not staying here. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, when he comes to describe the reality of this life, he says, this life, this dunya, this dunya is like a bridge. Antara. Do you see anyone living on a bridge? You don't. People use the bridge to cross from point A to B. To B. Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib says, this life is like a bridge. The eternal life, the, uh, the everlasting life is the life after this life, the hereafter. And this life, Hayat al-Dunya, is just merely 50, 60 years for some, and for some 30 or 40 years, like Brother, uh, brother Muhsin Jabbar Zara. He spent 30 or 40 years and he had to go. Some people spend 10 years, children pass away. And some people know, Allah gives them chance and opportunity to see what they can give yeah, to life. I mean, SubhanAllah, it reminds me of a, a dream that um, someone that I know had. Um, uh, it's really kind of hard to fathom how this life can, can flick in, in, in an instant uh, and, uh, and, and, and go so fast. But the dream, my friend was telling me that he basically uh, reached his shahada in the dream. So he was killed. Uh, and then uh, as soon as he was killed, he found himself in the barzakh. When he was there, he looked towards his, uh, his wife and he saw his wife uh, uh, lamenting and mourning him. Uh, and he said, I was laughing because of how silly I, I, I realized the world is once I was in Barzakh. And I saw her crying and I saw her, I saw her grow old into an old woman, but it went, f went by, 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 by like 30 seconds. And within 30 seconds, suddenly I saw her in front of me. And she was so confused by who I was because um, she, uh, she almost didn't recognize me, the person says, because I was 30 years old or whatever. Uh, and she had had all that whole lifetime uh, go by her, um, so I think that that's a beautiful example that really made me kind of understand um, just how uh, this life can 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 flip by an incident. And it's something that the companions of Imam Hussein, that Muslim bin Aqil himself, almost saw and understood because they knew that this life was nothing. Therefore, however much pain and death they go through in this life, they know that the minute they pass through into the next life, it'll all be worth it. Um, this is the 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 reality of the school of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and before that the school of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib and the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam from day one Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam when he used to sit down with the Muslims in the, in the mosque he used to continuously advise them and admonish them about the reality of this life and the reality of the, of the hereafter and he used to tell the Mu'mineen the Muslims Always remember death. Always remember death. Because some people dedicate their lives and they strive so hard. They run behind their lusts and their desires. And they don't know that this life is only two or three days and you're going to leave this world. And this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith Qudsi says, Bani Adam, mankind, the descendants of Adam, they run after something in this life that I have not created. People, they, they, they long to find happiness. They long to find something that will make their life stable in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created happiness for this world. This world, this, this alam, this dunya that you're living in is a... It's a period of testing. Inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, the, the reason that we have created mankind and we've brought them to this life, لِنَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا بَلَا It's a test. When will we get the reward? Inshallah, is when we, in the last moments of our lives, we will see the reward, we will see a glimpse of that reward and then receive the full reward afterwards. And that is when we notice Amir al-Mu'mineen, Fatima al-Zahra, Hassan, Hussein and the Holy Prophet sitting by our sides. Mm. In the last moments of death, Halat mm. al-Ihtadar. These noble individuals come to the aid of one. Mm. And there is a beautiful story just to aid what you said about the dream of your friend. Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam one day took his companions and went to the cemetery. 
when they arrived at the cemetery Amir al muminin as, as it is mustahab when you pass by a cemetery or enter a cemetery you, you say salam to the inhabitants of that area of that location so Amir al muminin alayhi salam said Assalamu alaykum Assalamu ala ahli diyar min al mu'minina wal mu'minat antum al sabiqun wa nahnu al lahiqun and then the imam started walking around some of the graves until he arrived at one of the uh, graves he spoke to his companions and said oh my companions you see this grave here they said yes he said, I, w I am going to pray, make dua, and I am going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give life back to this inhabitant of this grave so I can ask him and you can learn. Oh. Amir al muminin started reciting a special dua and then he, uh, he had a walking stick. He struck that walking stick onto the ground of that grave. He said, he struck the ground and he said, Qum bi idhnillah, ya Abdullah. And the companion suddenly noticed that the person buried in that grave sat up, took away, wiped himself from the dust. He looked at Amir al muminin and he said, Assalamu alayka ya wasiya Rasulillah. Peace be upon you, O uh, commander of, Amir, of, uh, of uh, the faithful, successor, successor of Rasulullah. Amir al muminin replied back and the Imam asked him a question. He said, oh young man, how long have you, have be, have you been dead? He said, ya wasiya Rasulillah, it's been a day or part of a day. And then the Imam asked him, name me the name of the emperor or the king that used to live when you, before you died. And that's young man said he brought the name of a, of a king or emperor which had lived 400 years back and then imam told him explain to us the whole process of your death the young man said i was ill my family my my children my daughters they were busy in the courtyard and i was sitting in the in the room and the door was closed suddenly i saw the door open and a very handsome very beautiful young man come inside I had never seen such beauty very nice white clean clothes very beautiful scent and smell of perfume and he was smiling he came inside he spoke to me he said to me what are you suffering from he said, I am suffering from an illness which has deprived me from walking. Now, this is for you, the mu'mineen and mu'minat. Ponder about this hadith. He said, this young man came, started swiping, wiping from my toes, coming up. He said, how do you feel now? He said, well, my leg is fine, but the pain is going up. And then he continued wiping until he arrived at my chest. He said, how do you feel now? He said, I told him, everything's fine, but the pain has reached my chest and my head. He said he continued wiping over my body until I felt that there was no pain in my body. Moments later, I noticed my, my family, my wife, my children, they came inside. They started shaking me and they started hitting themselves and crying. Gradually, he was prepared for burial. They washed him. He says, when they poured that cold water on my body, it was so nice. It was so pleasing, the fact that they were washing me with that cold water. The shroud that they put on me, that kafan, it was the best clothing I had worn. And the moment that they put me in that grave, now... I just remembered I was in the burial of brother Mohsin Jabbar Zara yesterday and it was an honor for me to take part of that burial I went inside the grave and every now and then we, we need to 
remind ourselves of these kind of situations. Ahlul Bayt salam, they say it is mustahab for someone to uh, dig a grave for himself in his lifetime and every now and then go inside the grave and sleep in that grave and speak to yourself and read this ayah. Rabbir ju'oon la'alli a'malu salihan. Oh God, give me another chance. Let me go back and so I can do some of the things that I um, failed to accomplish in my life. So I went yesterday, I went down inside the grave. I helped the brothers. And the moment that I received the body, the body of uh, Brother Muhsin Jabbar Zara, it was a different experience out of this world. A couple of days ago, he was alive. And now I'm carrying his, his lifeless body. We brought it down. We positioned his body into that grave. And we started reading that talqeen. And that talqeen reminds us by the Imams السلام, that death is haq, munkar and nakir are haq, as sarat haq, Quran is haq, al Islam is haq, a'imma to Ahlul Bayt, they remind you everything. And that itself it reminds you that, oh mankind, oh human being, don't forget yourself. Today you are fit and strong, today you have energy, today you have power. Today you have desires, you go left and right, you look at that, you look at that. But don't forget yourself that the same way you came into this world, you will leave this world. So make sure when you leave this world, you're carrying with you your full book of hasanat, of blessings, of being a noble servant to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. So here... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ In Surah Al-Jum'ah verse number 8. This death that you are running away from is going to meet you. It's going to come to you. Who bigger than the prophets of Allah, the messengers of Allah? Is there anyone more important in the life cycle of, of human beings than the prophets and the messengers? No. Prophet Sulaiman ibn Dawood. Prophet Sulaiman, he was given what no other messenger and prophet was given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave power and wealth and leadership to Prophet Sulaiman to an extent that Prophet Sulaiman said, There's nothing else that I, I need that I can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had control of everything. One day, he told his companions, his servants, I am going to go up in my castle to overlook my land and my servants. I don't want anyone to disturb me. No one. I'm going to enter this room and I am going to close the door and I am just going to stand on the balcony and notice everyone, my land. A messenger of Allah. So he went up. He closed the door, he stood by the balcony with his walking stick, pondering and looking at everything. Suddenly, he noticed someone come in. Malakul Maut, for Mu'mineen, when he comes, he comes in the figure of a, a handsome, smiling, happy young man. But God forbid, if a young man fails to practice or to behave, let's say, to behave like a human being, Malakul Maut will come in a different shape and form. Mm. Prophet Sulaiman looked at that, at that young man. He said, who are you? And how did you enter this room? I had ordered my guards not to allow anyone to come in. He said, this young man, Malakul Maut, he said, the Lord of this house gave me permission to enter it. Mm. He said, the Prophet Sulaiman acknowledged that he is Malik al Maut. He said, Okay, what do you need? How can I help? Are you here to visit? 
or are you here to take my soul? Malak al Maud said, No, Jituka Kabiran. I came to take your soul. It is narrated in some narrations, books of history, that Prophet Sulaiman asked Malakul Maut, the, the angel of death, to allow him to sit down or lie down on his bed and then he should take his life. Malakul Maut said, No, Allah has said, Whilst you are standing, I should take your ruh. Prophet Sulaiman, who some call King Sulaiman, stood there with his walking stick Malakul Maut took his soul he stood there for days the servants never knew that he had passed away how did they find out when a small insect started eating away his walking stick until he fell over that's when they found out a prophet of Allah I'm not saying Ali Nawab or some other person a prophet a messenger of Allah who had been sent for the guidance of mankind this is the way he passes away. Now how is me and my friends and my family, how are they going to leave this world? Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, O oh Muslims, I am going to Karbala, but let me tell you something. In me, I, Hussein, son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, in me, la ara al maut illa sa'ada death for me Hussein is happiness why how could death be a, a source of happiness for you O oh, Aba Abdullah because the conclusion of my movement is going to be shahada mm -hmm. and is there anything more sweeter than shahada it is narrated that the first drop of blood from the body of a shaheed of a martyr on the ground it will be a reason for wiping away all of his sins and mistakes. The first drop. And the moment that he falls on the plains of the battlefield, his head will fall into the lap of his maid and whore in the paradise. She will look at him and she will tell him, Welcome. I am your whore. I am your maid. And I have been created just for you. Is that only for martyrs? Mm. No. This is the same situation for the Zawar of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The Zawar, those who come to visit Karbala carrying the love of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, they lament, they cry, they beat their chests, they strike their heads and shed blood for the martyrdom of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them the same but more people will stand in the Sahat al-Mahshar on the desert of Mahshar Yawm al-Qiyamah and the Zawar and the Khuddam and the servants of Abi Abdullah al Hussein will enter the paradise a thousand years before the rest of the people will enter the paradise and Sayyid, you mentioned um, the Zawar of Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam. Uh, and I don't know um, if, it, if there are any hadith about this. Perhaps you can um, teach us and educate us, inshallah. But I've heard many beautiful verses of poetry about um, uh, people who visit the shrine of Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam. Uh, and Imam saying, you know what, these people visited me in my grave. So there was no doubt that I will come to visit them in their grave. So when you talk about being buried and being loaded into the grave, or even after dying straight away and seeing the angel of death, um, one of my personal wishes, I'm sure your wish as well, is that when we die, we don't just see the angel of death. But we see Imam Hussain, I saw in front of us saying, you know what, you gave your life to me, thank you. You gave everything, your money, everything you had to come and visit my grave. And I'm coming here to thank you. And yeah, you know what, Sayyid, if, that, if, if, if everything I give, everything, whatever little we give to Imam Hussain uh, in our life, you talk about Jannah, you talk about Horis, you talk about all these things. You know what, all, I, all that will suffice for me. And I speak from my heart when I say this. All that will suffice for me is seeing Imam Hussain in front of me uh, after I die. And just telling me, you know what, thank you. Th thank you for, for what you've given me. And, and say it in the, in, the, in the 12 or so minutes that we have left. Perhaps you can, you can take us, take our souls into the, 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 the beautiful story of Karbala and Imam Hussain. Before I go into the, the way Muslim Ibn Aqil tragically passed away, I just remember the very beautiful story. In the city of Tehran, 
very quickly. There was a butcher by the name of Qasim. Qasim, this Qasim, he was, he wasn't very practicing. Let's just say that. His behavior wasn't all the best. He was, you know, engaged in doing many wrong things. What's at the month of Muharram? He puts everything away, comes back to his senses, wears black, and tries to join the servants of Abi Abdullah in mourning. The first day of Muharram, he went to his local mosque. He's, he wanted to serve. He was very strong and very uh, powerful individual. So he went to the mosque, the local mosque. They noticed Qasim's coming. They said, not this guy again, because his reputation in the society, in the community is not very well. If he comes, people will never come to our majlis. So one of us should go and nicely tell him, please, don't come to the mosque during these 10 nights. Stay away for the sake of Imam Hussein. They came, Qasim came. They told him, listen, Qasim, your behavior over the past hasn't been good. And people told us, if Qasim comes, we will never come to the Majlis of Abi Abdullah. So Qasim, stay at home. Qasim's heart broke. During these nights, he used to send his family to the Majlis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. In his house, there was a basement. He used to go in that basement, cover the walls with black. He used to take a chain, a zanjir, similar to what the mawakib, the processions do every day in the morning in Karbala. They come out and they strike their back with zanjir and chains. Qasim the butcher used to go every night when the family go and he's all alone at home, go in the basement in his small Husseini and starts striking his back saying, Hussein, Hussein. Couple of days passed away and he sees Imam Hussein in his dream. Imam Hussein comes and says to him, Qasim, please accept my apologies. I am sorry that these people have stopped you from going to my majlis. But Qasim, I am going to ask you something. You love me and you want to help for my cause. For the rest of your life, I, Imam Hussein, ask you to put everything away and start a clean page, a clean life. Qasim wakes up in the morning, very amazed that he has seen Imam Hussein in his dream. Imam Hussein goes in the dream of the management of that mosque and says to them the same thing. He says, all of your a'mal I do not accept if you do not go and apologize to Qasim. They come to Qasim's house. They narrate to, them, to him the same story and they ask him to forgive them and invite him back to the masjid. Qasim goes and says, okay, I accept your apology. Inshallah, I will come to your majlis. The next day, the people in the community, they hear the sound of cries coming from the house of Qasim. They come and they see that Qasim has passed away. Clean slate. This is the mercy of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. When he wants to help and support his servants in whatever condition they are, he will come. Muslim Ibn Aqil, again, someone who dedicated his life for Abi Abdullah al Hussein and he did not fear death in whatever circumstances. After he came to Kufa, he was all alone. The people of Kufa, those companions who were close to Amir al muminin they came, they supported him. But unfortunately, Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad, he paid people to leave Muslim ibn Aqil. Muslim ibn Aqil, the night that he wanted to take over power and assume power, he said, our appointment is that we meet at the mosque, we pray Salatul Jama'ah and we make a move. Muslim came, started praying, and there were thousands of people praying behind him until during the, the Salat, the prayer people started leaving him 
one by one until there was only a handful of people with Muslim. Muslim looked around. He said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He knew that this is uh, a trick played by Bani Umayyah against Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Of course, the people of Kufa, they called Abi Abdullah to come to, to Kufa, but unfortunately they sold this life and they sold the other life for the sake of this life. What's your conclusion? Death for, for them was the end of everything, but for a Muslim was the beginning of everything. Muslim starts in the middle of the night, all alone, starts walking around the, the streets of Kufa. He was gharib, he didn't have anyone. Then he came and sat in front of a house, very thirsty, very tired. That house belonged to a lady, a noble lady called Taw'a. Taw'a was one of the lovers of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. But unfortunately, she had a son who had been brainwashed by Bani Umayyah. She came out looking for her son because the atmosphere at that time was very bad. She noticed a figure sitting by her door. Cutting the long story short, she knew, th she found out that this is Muslim and what the people of Kufa had done to him. He asked her for water. She brought him water and she invited him inside. Her son found out that Muslim was inside the house. He goes to Qasr al-Imara to inform the authorities that Muslim is in my house. And they come with their hundreds. Muslim fights very bravely like Amir al-Mu'mineen on the battlefield, killing the majority. They send for more backup until they dig a hole and gradually Muslim falls into that um, trench and that hole and they capture Muslim they take him to Qasr al-Imara Qasr al-Imara Abaydullah ibn Ziyad speaks to Muslim and he says why have you come to Kufa Muslim explains that he has been sent as a messenger to the people of Kufa by Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Abaydullah ibn Ziyad orders for his death they take him on top of Qasr al-Imara the castle of Imara and Muslim says, now that you are going to kill me, just give me one more uh, request and let me pray towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim prays. He asked for a bowl of water. He was very thirsty, but because he had been beaten and they had broken his teeth, as he came to drink water, some blood uh, dropped into that bowl of water and he was not able to drink it. He faced towards uh, Iraq and he raised his hand and said, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah, Sayyidi ibn Rasulullah, peace be upon you, O Hussein. Ya Aba Abdullah, I wish I was able to inform you about the hypocrisy of the people of Kufa. Ya Aba Abdullah, do not come to Kufa because the people of Kufa have turned their backs on us. They decided to behead Muslim Ibn Aqil. Adham Allah ujurana wa ujurakum ya mu'mineen. O lovers of Ahlul Bayt, this very noble companion surrendered to death, surrendered to shahada, ending his life in the cause of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. They beheaded Muslim. They threw the body of Muslim to the ground. They tied his body with ropes and they started dragging the body of Muslim between the roads and the streets of Kufa. Someone was traveling from Kufa towards Iraq. He met Abi Abdullah al 
Hussein during the way, during the path. Imam Hussein asks him, where are you coming from? That man says, I am from Kufa. Imam says, tell me, inform me, what is the news of Kufa these days? He says, I did not leave, but I noticed that they were dragging the body of a Muslim and Hani between the streets and the markets of Kufa. It was then that Abi Abdullah al Hussein started crying out loudly and saying, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Sister Zainab, bring me Hamida, the little daughter of Muslim. Muslim had a three-year-old, a four-year-old daughter who had accompanied her uncle Hussein, who was in the camp of Hussein towards Karbala. Auntie Zainab brought Hamida. Imam Hussein received Hamida, sat her on his lap. He started looking down at Hamida. Hamida is amazed. Why has the Imam called me over? The little daughters of Hussein sitting in front of the Imam wanting to see what is the Imam going to do with Hamid. Imam started doing something that all the children noticed. They know that this movement is only practiced with orphans. Imam Hussein السلام, started wiping his hands on the head of Hamid. This is the most tragic thing one can do to bring an orphan and start striking their head. Hamida looked at her uncle and said, Uncle Hussein, why are you doing this to me? Has anything happened to my father? Hussein says, Hamida, my, my sister Zainab is your auntie and I am your uncle Hamida I have received news that your father Muslim has been slain in Kufa it was then that Muslim's daughter Hamida started striking her head and crying loudly and shouting Wa Abata Wa Husayna Oh Sayyidi Ya Aba Abdullah you brought Hamida, Muslim's orphan. You set her in your lap. You started swiping on her head. But on the day of Ashura, after you was killed, how did they treat your orphans, Ya Aba Abdullah? Ya Hussein, Ya Bari. السلام عليك وعلى ابن عمك مسلم بن عقيل ورحمة الله وبركاته. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد. We send our salutations and our blessings upon and ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to send blessings upon the master of martyrs of Abdul Rahman Hussein and his cousin Muslim bin Aqil. And inshallah, I'll be joined by after after the break by Sayyid Ali Hakim, who will be reciting for us. Some love things, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.